They're already running around in Oklahoma going, what the heck is this bird thing? Like, I think like there's like this ISIS group of like gay aliens who are trying to bring back the something. Take, da take down the overpass bridge. For those of you who come from a different movement, this is called viral advertising. The reason the triangle's upside down is because we are not the kind of people who are trying to make deals with the world and get the best that we can. We are the kind of people who are trying to turn the world, Egypt, upside down. Pro-lifers who go down to Egypt and seek shelter in the shadow of Pharaoh are wrong. I can't get on Facebook without hearing how wrong it is that I say that. But I would say that before Jesus Christ, because every time I say it, I do say it before Him. They are wrong. They are in sin. And the pro-lifers who can't tell the other pro-lifers that they are wrong and that they're in sin are in sin. And we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to be very biblical. We're going to be very bold. We're going to be very unashamed of the truth, justice, and mercy of God and we're going to stop making deals with the devil and scheming and thinking that if we do it for 44 more years, we'll abolish abortion. We're going to demand abolition and nothing but abolition. And we're not going to change the way that the word abolition or change the meaning of the word abolition. We're not going to like say we're courageously abolishing abortion and go march for a 20 week fetal pain bill that has rape exceptions and every other exception. So, so I just want everyone to understand that when we say the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ is being brought into conflict with the world and abortion and its abettors and all that kind of stuff, we mean like the kingdom of God, the cold, justice, truth, mercy of God, okay? But we come in the name of Jesus Christ. And we're not going to hide that, okay? Come in the name of Jesus Christ and we're doing exactly what he says. Where are we speaking? We are speaking in a state. For those of you who are out of state, let me tell you about the state. Let me read it to you because it's really small. Oklahoma is, quote, the most pro-life state in the nation, according to Americans United for Life. And at the recent Rose Day, they actually stood up and they said, we are the most pro-life state in the nation. And everyone clapped. It was like a standing ovation in the House of Representatives. The governor is pro-life, and she says that she'll sign every pro-life bill. The lieutenant governor is pro-life. The attorney general is pro-life. 85% of the legislator, if you count up the legislators, House and Senate, they're pro-life. The Speaker of the House is pro-life. The Minority Leader of the House is pro-life. The President pro tempore of the Senate is pro-life. The Majority Floor Leader of the Senate is pro-life. We're talking about the, the Democrats and the Republicans. The House, okay? The Catholics and the Baptists work together and they have a strong pro-life coalition. There are 7,000 plus pro-life churches. There are 45 CPCs. 16 pro-life bills have been passed in the past 25 years and 85%. The problem with this is, is this fact, this, this, this page, if that is true, we should not even be in this state doing anything. And some people say, well, that's because this is not true. They're not really pro-life. False. That is actually true. They meet the exact criteria of the pro-life establishment. Hence, in a recent study, Oklahoma is the most pro-life state in the nation. So, so page three or page two, we the people of Oklahoma murder 6,000 babies every year and the pro-life politicians we've elected to protect them refuse to treat their destruction as murder. As Toby said, they do all sorts of things, and that guy in the video said, they do all sorts of things, but they don't treat it as murder. The question is, how is this? How have we become so numb? Well, the Word of God tells us how we've become so numb, and it's basically what Toby spoke, spoke on. When the sentence against an evil deed is not executed speedily, the heart of the children of man is fully set to do evil. So how in a state with seven thousand plus pro-life churches and all these pro-life clinics and all this kind of stuff, how is it that people, when they get pregnant and they're like, oh, I'm with child, think to themselves, go get an abortion? Why do they think that way? 
Well, we know from prior study and understanding, there's no salt, there's no light. They, they don't think, oh, I've got an unwanted, I, I, unplanned child. I better go to those people who practice pure and undefiled religion for God the Father. Yeah. No, they go to Larry Burns or Kathleen Glaze or whatever the other abortionists are, okay? So we already know that. There's a salt and light problem. But then whenever you're out there and anywhere you go, it's like, well, it's legal. Some of these folks are like, well, it can't be that bad. Because if it was that bad, our 85% of the legislature would pass laws against it, right? Or whenever you go out there, if you go out there frequently enough, they tell you things like, my baby won't feel any pain. Or I'm not that far along. My baby doesn't have a heartbeat yet, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because they're pro-lifers. They've been educated by pro-lifers. But the word of God is very clear that um, if the sentence, if it's not justice, if a justice is not established, who is always the prey? The fatherless. And who's always connected to the fatherless? Uh, women who've been abandoned. We're going to be very, very focused on this fact. This is a distinguishing fact. And I know some people probably in the room support the the Dom bill and the taking away of the medical license and stuff of like that, we're not here to be poo-pooing on that and make a big fuss. But here's a clear and distinct fact. We call abortion murder because we're not liars or pragmatists or spineless people who think you can fight something by not calling it what it is. If you think that, I'm sorry. It's just not true. Abortion is murder. That's the only way it can be abolished. And if you abolish it without it being called murder, well, it's going to be worse than what came out of the Civil War. Uh, I don't want to get into that. That would be something I know how to talk about. But, um, so we're going to be very much focused on the fact that abortion is the planned and paid-for termination of a preborn human child. It's not a woman's right. It's not health care. Abortion is not health care. So passing a bill that says we're not going to medically license you is treating it like health care. We don't want to educate people to believe that. Why? Because we are not blind guides. We want to tell the truth. Here's the deal that we've all done. You know the Bob Inyard line, and then you can kill a baby. What we are passing out to the people of Oklahoma is telling them how pro-life it is, telling them why people, asking them why is it that people kill their children in this sense, and then we're listing their laws. These are all these part of the 63rd statute here. I'm not going to read the stuff, but... A mother must consider her choice to get an abortion for at least 72 hours before she goes to kill her baby. If a mother is past 24 weeks pregnant, a doctor must agree that the baby will impair her health before he kills the baby. It says a baby must be fully inside of a uterus when that baby is killed. It says the doctor cannot sell a baby's body or body parts after they have them ripped apart, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These are the laws that have been being passed recently. Abortion clinics must post a sign saying it is against the law for anyone to force someone else to kill their baby. And that babies can only be killed by mothers who willfully choose to kill their babies. An abortionist must perform an ultrasound which a mother may choose to look at or not look at before she has her baby killed. A mother over 20 weeks pregnant must be informed about fetal pain and offered anesthesia for her baby so that they may choose to painlessly kill the baby. Choose, choose, choose. Public funds can only be used to kill a child when the child is being punished to death for the crime of his or her father or familial relation, rape and incest. Private funds must be used to kill babies conceived in love. A woman over eight weeks must be given a chance, a choice. It's not a typo, but it's a rhetorical problem must be given a chance to listen to her baby's heartbeat before she consents to kill her baby and stop its beating heart. But she doesn't have to listen to it. Says that babies may not be killed because of their sex. We pass laws like you can't kill your baby because they're like female. But you can kill your baby just because. Stupid law. But a fundraising letter is attached to that law and a bunch of people who want to do right get the letter from their blind guide and they say, I want to do right. And they send money back. Stop sex selection abortion. Absolutely wrong. Says that if an abortion clinic chooses to have a website, they must include a link to a state-run website called awomansright.org that mothers may choose to click or not click on before they set up an appointment to kill their baby. So the state, in partnership with the abortionist, create 
a, a, a website interface so that people can make a choice that you don't have to click on. Or you could just cease to have an, uh, a website if you wanted. And then it says, if you're going to kill babies for a living, you cannot dismember them with forceps. But you can dismember them using sharp surgical tools and surgical devices. Every single kind of abortion is a dismemberment abortion. Because that's what we're made of. Even when we're human embryos, we're made of members, parts. So anyway, the purpose of these laws, oh, and this pamphlet has the names of politicians. It has the names of leaders. The purpose of these laws, remarks Tony Lounger of Oklahomans for Life, those of you guys who are in this situation, to provide a better opportunity for adequate reflection following receipt of informed consent, yada, yada, yada. Um, you read the pamphlet. Every pro-life law passed in Oklahoma accepts abortion as a legal right, classifies it as a difficult decision, and seeks to regulate its practice. They're all pro-choice laws. Pro-lifers pass pro-choice laws. And nobody calls them out for it. And if you call them out for it, they all, all the pro-lifers send around little emails saying how mean you are. And we actually literally do not care about that. Given that our legislator has refused to establish justice, we filed this, OK? Um, there was a little stink about this. Hillary wanted to use it for her campaign to prove how murderous and vicious she is. So she's like, no, women have to have the right to slice a baby's face off in Oklahoma. This is ridiculous. They're extremists, OK? Sorry for the language. The people who are for abortion are, are radical extremists. They're dangerous. They're vicious people. They're evil. So. This, this is basically, you've all read it probably online. As you know, the ACLU of Oklahoma and vocal advocates of post-reproduction destruction, they're so terrified that they don't even want the petition circulating. But here's the deal. I don't know if any of you guys really want to circulate a petition all that bad. And all we really wanted to do was rebuke and call the legislators to repent. Um, and so they're serving that up on a plate for us, and we're going to do that anyway. So it is protested. It is going to be heard this uh, coming Wednesday. Uh, we get to stand before a referee of the Supreme Court of Oklahoma and, uh, and try to do something there. But there doesn't need to be a citizen-led initiative. right? This is in our pamphlet. This is in our materials. There doesn't actually have to be a citizen-led initiative. Because pro-life legislators, 85%, they have the numbers, the power, the ability, and the process to, by referendum, put this exact language on the ballot for Oklahomans to vote for. Amen. They can do that. If they don't do that, it's because not only are they spineless, but they've all watched the video and said, I am not spineless. And we say, are you? And they say, we're not putting it forward. And we say, no, actually, you're evil. So... This is the sort of thing we're passing out. I spent more time on those pages because that's the Oklahoma stuff. Um, you know, stuff that this is basically just, you know, Facebook uh, stuff. The Supreme Court, get this, the Supreme, do you guys know that the Supreme Court is not the Constitution? Right. It's like the Constitution's the Constitution. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're going to throw out our bill. They're going to thump us on the head and they're going to throw it out and they're going to say that this is repugnant to the Constitution. And we're going to be sitting there saying, I'm sorry, but I read the Constitution, and I miss that you're allowed to, like, asphyxiate your children part in the con Constitution. And we're going to be very loud about it. We're going to be making more videos and all this kind of stuff. And people are going to have to watch them because we're going to be bothering them all week. But our legislator is not bound by any law or duty to aid or abet them. They're duty-bound by their oaths to support, obey, and defend the United States Constitution to oppose them. And here's the deal. The Constitution is not a perfect document. It's not the word of God. But the Constitution does have within it prohibitions of taking the life of other people. And it's very clear when they did the 14th Amendment that there was no difference between person and human. The American medical establishment was totally against abortion. And guess what? Before they passed Roe v. Wade, guess what the American medical establishment called abortion? In their actual documents. Murder. They call it infanticide, too. Good points. But they called it murder. But they don't call it murder anymore. No one calls it murder anymore because everybody bows to their God. And this is their God. Because whom you fear and whom you do not challenge is your God. So anytime any legislator says, well, oh, be nice when you say this. I don't know. Maybe not. But, well, I would do this, but the Supreme Court's just going to throw it out. Challenge the Supreme Court. Um, 
I'm not going to read this page four or five straight times, but you know, that's, that was Toby's talk. He wrote that page. So peace, peace, when there is no peace. That's what we've got. That's, what, that's the situation. But we're not going to leave it there. We're going to actually call. So Oklahoma is the most pro-life state in the nation. What we're seeking is for Oklahoma to become the first abolitionist state in the nation. And I don't mean that because I want to sell t-shirts or any of those stupid criticisms that we get. It's an actual word. Abolish it. Don't get hung up on your weird organization envy jealousy problem. It's a word. Abolitionist. We need a state that will abolish abortion. To do that, they would have to decide that they want to serve and protect their neighbors and honor God more than they serve and protect themselves and deny God. And they need to hear over and over and over from us that they do this or they, don't, they neglect justice and mercy because they do not honor God. They do not love God. They do not love their neighbors. So we are calling them to repent. So dang simple. I would go into the bird and the cracks in the ground and all that stuff, but I like to leave it mysterious. Deal with it. So... There's an earlier page where the donkey and the elephant are playing football, and there's like this 50-yard line, red and circuses. What do we worship in Oklahoma? Football. Football. Yeah. I don't know if this is legal or not. Not, not legal to hold the sign up, but we redrew the sill. I'm going to have to lose the mic. At Oklahoma State Seal, this is on the driver's license of every Oklahoman in here. This is like on you. It's on all the government buildings, everywhere we go. It, it used to have like the five Indian tribes, and in the middle was like the first governor shaking hands with the first Indian tribe people that they ran off. So, I mean, it, it already had like unjust symbols on it, but, um, but they were proud of that. So, woe to them. What we got now is the five tribes. We got the five people groups. We've got the industry people. The Latin says, gain the whole world to lose your soul. You saw that big old owl looking building out there, Devon Tower? You got the Capitol. You got the, the biggest cross. Some Christians in Texas are trying to make a bigger cross. Um, well into us. You got the IVF, medical establishment. And then you got the whitewashed tomb. That's your Presbyterian Church of America, Five Point Calvinist, totally legit church. I'm sorry, but I've been asking the pastor of this church to repent of neglect of justice and mercy for nine years. Uh, five years. I don't know why I said nine. I didn't repent nine years ago. Five years. Um, that's his church, and he has to deal with that. I'm sorry. It's true. Over here, you've got the education. You've got the education establishment. These are the symbols of all our big state colleges. Here's our bread and circuses. OU football, thunder. And here's our preborn children. Here's our preborn children. The children we kill before implantation with leaven agestral, with plan B, that we freeze in tubes and we destroy 6,000 times a day, and here's our pro-lifers. Here's their symbol, their rose day, whenever the Oklahomans for Life, with the Baptist General Convention, with the Catholic diocese, all unify together to give roses to these, whoa, to these pro-life politicians. That's good. Connecting all of them are a few things. Abortion. Unifying them is opposition to abolition. I'm not just trying to glorify the symbol here. That's just, it means abolish human abortion, and they are opposed to it. That's what they're, in the middle, this is Larry Burns, and he is shaking hands as blood runs down with the governor of Oklahoma, Mary Fallon, the most pro-life governor in the, state, in the nation, and the blood is running down onto the, the uh, scales of justice. And then you've got the Supreme Court, which rules, and industry which we want to keep. We can't challenge the Supreme Court because it would affect our dollars. The laurel says peace, peace, but it's wrapped in thorns. Okay? Just in case you have to explain it because it's going on the backs of all your shirts whenever you go into the state capitol on Monday morning to give them pamphlets and talk to them. Woe to those who neglect justice and mercy. Thanks, Greg. 
It's the nicest thing anyone's done for me today. It's woe to you for neglecting justice and mercy, not, hey, can, 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 can we talk for 30 minutes? And would you maybe read this book? And maybe let's get together and write some laws. <laughs> I kid you not. You know how long they've been doing that? 40 years. Somewhere. I don't know. Maybe it's 38. I don't know. It took them a while. I think the Baptists were for, for abortion whenever Roe v. Wade's passed. So there's been some form of repentance. But they need a prophetic witness. I do not think that all people who are going to them to try to say, like, uh, make deals and stuff like that are bad. I don't think that. Don't, don't impose that on, on the, the energy or whatever. But we have to tell them when they say, well, I'm pro-life. I have a 100% pro-life record. Just look at my website uh, on the national right, my ma national rights life page or whatever. I have a superstar of the pro-life whatever movement. The governor said it last year. No. You're in sin because you neglect justice and mercy. All those other good things you should have done. But here it is. You say the children are being murdered. And yet when you pass laws, you say in sex education, there ought to be a module where we include an image of a prenatal baby. If you really thought killing children in the womb was murder, you would pass laws against murder. If the governor really thought that abortion was murder, she would send the sheriff, the local police, anyone under her power to go shut him down. Their lips say it's murder. Their actions say otherwise. And we got to stop letting them not think that. So we call them to repent. This is the measure that we will be reading on the mic outside of the, during the press conferences. This is the measure that we will be passing out to people. This is the measure that we'll be asking people to sign. And when we ask them to sign it, we're not going to say, and we'd like your email so we can send you a fundraising fleece. Or a fleece for fundraising. When we ask them to sign it, we're not, it's, not, it's not a game. We're going to actually take their name and their address, and we're going to say, when we went and talked to the people, they demand that you abolish abortion and stop regulating it. Not just they demand that um, you fight abortion and that you're pro-life, and that you say you're trying to protect life, but then switch it and do an audible or whatever. The people want you to stop being pro-life. And uh, if you want to sum it up, we demand that these changes be made now, not 5, 10, or 15 years down the road. In short, we, the people of the state of Oklahoma, demand the total and immediate abolition of human abortion as the legal, constitutional, and moral duty of our elected and appointed officials. So the pamphlet ends uh, just with a picture. It's on your shirt. Abortion will be abolished when we cease to tolerate it. I actually believe that's basically true. I don't think abortion will ever be, like, eradicated. I think we have to have, like, the new heavens and new earth. But I think when people kill their children, they ought to be doing it somewhere in the dark against God in secret and not with the permission of everybody in power over them. Because the only thing that the governing authorities have been given to do is to be a terror to evildoers and a protector of good doers. Good doers? It's getting late. Yes, we are the people who think that not only is abortion murder, but anyone who sheds the blood of an innocent human being by man blood shall be shed we're unashamed of that fact because we're seeking to establish justice not become enemies of God by moderating justice so as you go to bed and you're thinking about what Toby said Josh's songs the plan the ideas and all that kind of stuff and you ask yourself are these folks saying that the reason that an 85 percent pro-life house and senate can't abolish abortion is because God is their enemy? Is that what they're saying? Yes. That's what we're saying. Michael Graves is a universal sign. The soapbox has been removed. All right, I'm praying. Father God, we are trying to do something in your name, and because of that, we want to do it well, and that means that we want to be rested, and it means that we want to be um, good ambassadors of you. So I pray as we go back and as we sleep or as we fellowship a little tonight that we would be holy, that we would 
that we would do nothing, that we would sip on no secret sin, and that we would have no animosity against one another or anything would be a part of our camp here that we would bring into the battle tomorrow. So we go into the battle for you and for your truth, and we just ask that you would go before us and that you would always remind us that the battle ultimately belongs to you. Increase our faith. And uh, as we impart on this whole thing, um, we, just, we just ask your blessing, Lord. We uh, humbly admit that no matter what we do and how we scheme, it is all worthless without you. And so, Lord Jesus, we need your help. And um, we're calling people to repent, to come to know you, to do what's right. And they can only do that by a work of your spirit. So we're just bringing the message, Lord. Help us to bring the message. Help us to get out of here tonight, go to bed, and do what we must do. We love you, Lord Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen.